Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest has over 15 years of counseling and mentoring in the field of social work. He now works with at-risk children and specializes in individual, couples, marriage, and family therapy, and as well as parent coaching. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Thankfully for us, he put some of this amazing knowledge in a book. Please welcome the author of Dear Future Wife, Paul Bashay Williams. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. So let's jump right into it. Uh, as a therapist, what are some of the most common challenges you've seen in relationships today? Of course, of course, communication. Communication yeah. mm -hmm. is the biggest thing. Yeah. And I think sometimes we communicate our needs, but we don't know how to communicate our wants. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we get caught up in what we're saying is actually not what we're really meaning. Mm -hmm. So we might translate something like, I don't feel good today. Like, you're not doing what I need instead of saying, instead of communicating that I need you to do certain things. Right. So we communicate from a deficit as opposed to telling you what I really need in order for the relationship to continue to develop and grow. Speak mm -hmm. from a deficit. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. No, from he said deficit. we speak, speak from, from a deficit. We speak right. from no, a deficit. No, he said we do that and we shouldn't. We right. should that's, actually, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that's what I was like yeah, I'm pointing yeah. out. Wow, that's deep. Yeah. Speaking mm -hmm. from a deficit. And yeah. that's pretty common in uh, right. most relationships. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just did that yesterday. Did you? <laughs> Right. Break it down. Well, cause I guess because my husband know I speak from a deficit uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. that he was probably used to. Right. Okay. But I did, I did, I did say it very kindly and with love because my husband don't. He's not the type. You don't get ready to be hollering and carrying on at okay. him. Yeah. So you have to talk very calm mm -hmm. and normal and lovingly right. like you would. But I asked. I told him that I need his help. Okay. I said, I need you to do X, Y, Z. I said a whole bunch of needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. say I want or, mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. said, it was very of a deficit. Like there's a lack, this is lacking. I need you to fill that void. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you say? I, and I thought that was right. Mm -hmm. So what was his what was his frame of mind then on the other side of that? Ooh. So when you come you're saying, I need you to do this, I need you to do that. So now I'm hearing like, okay, I need to go and do this. I need to stop whatever I'm doing, I need to do that. So if you communicate that, this is what I'm missing, this is where I struggle at. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me where you're struggling and where my purpose is on this particular thing that you need from uh -huh. me. So if you communicate that to me, then I can say, okay, well, let me show up. Let okay. me help out. Let mm -hmm. me be a partner in this particular situation that we're dealing with. Okay. Ooh, okay. <laughs> well, what even inspired you to write this book and even to call it Dear Future Wife? I mean, is it things that you're looking for in a woman and things that other men should look for in women and what women should look for in men? And, and who does this appeal to? It appeals to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so you asked me a whole bunch of questions, I'm going to answer all of them. Yes, to remember all right. I feel, Eat all them <laughs> up. I feel like I'm in a session right now. I need to remember in order what you asked me. Right. So, so what inspired you to write the book? in the first place. So, the first, so initially, this wasn't supposed to get out. So mm -hmm. I started writing from a, um, I wrote from a deficit. Mm -hmm. I wrote from a, a, a bad relationship that, that happened in college. So I had this ideology in my mind that I was going to go to college, I was going to meet my wife, I was going to get married, and I was going to have the kids and have a mm -hmm. career and all that type of stuff. That didn't happen. So once that happened, I said, okay, I'm going to write how I feel because it wasn't safe to share with anybody else that I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. So it was protection on paper because paper doesn't write back, paper doesn't talk back. Right. If I don't mm -hmm. like it, I can erase it. So at some point, it turned into a blog, and I started putting on social media, and it became pretty popular. Mm -hmm. And then I said, you know what? This is healing people. This is helping people. And people were saying, you should write a book. So it turned into a book. And it's not just all about me. It's about questions that I get from counseling, from clients, okay. from people asking me different friends and stuff like that, asking me different questions. I turned into letter form, which then I give my clinical perspective, and then I give <laughs> uh, a discussion so you can work on it. Because it's a workbook. It's a perspective that you really need to pay attention to, too. Right. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's book. Okay. Off the beaten path a little bit, um, you talked about something that was traumatic for you in college. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I'm sure that you're well graduated from, right. from college, right. of course, right. obvious. You still look great, though. Let me just say that. I ain't gonna hit you like that. You know, we're cool. We're all right. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, do you see how long you held on to that? And do you feel that that was a reason that it or could have been a, a possibility as to why you hadn't had a strong relationship to meet that wife yet? Mm. So to answer your question about where I was and how I got to the point where I'm at now. So when I was in college, I was 18 years old. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, when, that already, happened, when that relationship right, went sour. Right, right. Okay. but I already had my mind because I loved everything about relationships, I mm -hmm. love everything about marriage, that mm -hmm. I didn't have to be 19, 20, I didn't have to experience life to get married. Mm -hmm. So I had the immature mentality that whoever I met was gonna be my wife. Like, okay. hello, mm -hmm. we're about to get married. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a, um, a transition, there's a relationship that had to build. So once I learned those steps and once I went through college and I said, you know what, I need to focus on different things and really heal and really help and do all the things I need to do in my career, mm -hmm. then I became more mature enough to accept the relationship. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the person I meet is ready to accept me in yeah. relationship or I'm ready to accept them, but I'm mm -hmm. ready to accept relationship. Well, how, how 
how challenging is it for men to really say, I'm having an issue with connecting on a deeper level to women and I probably need to seek some help for myself personally? How challenging is How many men do you see in your sessions, um, in your office? Probably about 26. Okay, and how many women? Um, maybe about eight. Mm. I see a lot of kids too. Okay. Oh, okay. So, and okay. I see couples as well. Okay. Uh, so Friday is all men. It's and, all and, grown men. Okay. <laughs> all grown. Men. Okay. Okay. We, okay. we got to get to some of the other things. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just book. wondering. I was how, uh, right. How do how do women feel protected, or how uh, what what would you say are a list of the things that women need to feel protected, in your opinion? I think mentally, emotionally. I think physically, spiritually, financially. And when I say financially, that doesn't mean that you're paying for everything. Mm -hmm. Right. I think having a good uh, sense of awareness what what finances look like. Mm -hmm. Good money management. Uh, spiritually, you got to be able to pray for her. You know, you, you know, you pray for her, not pray on her. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. I think. I like that right um, there. Mm -hmm. You know, mentally, being Seeing able to that. connect mentally, we can have a stimulating conversation, and we can talk, and we can talk about nothing. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so it's it's a whole bunch of different things that, that we can do in relationship. But you got to pay attention to the person that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. Like you can't come in with just preconceived notion how you're going to be in that relationship mm -hmm. because you might you might not be meeting the person's needs or meeting the person's wants or being able to have good communication if you don't know that person. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well let's take. A for people who are finding challenges in their relationships, how do they work them out? What would what would be the one thing that you say is the first step into working out a challenge in your relationship? Because emotions can uh, make you come into the into that um, you know uh, I, not argument, but in, into that situation negatively. Mm -hmm. So, what would be the first thing that you should do if you're having trouble in a relationship to work it out? Um, besides, get my book. <laughs> I love uh, it. Well, then there's that. And workbook. No, I think we really need to check ourselves. We need to have a conversation mm -hmm. for ourselves before we go into it with someone else. Mm -hmm. So really, like, what am I communicating to this person? Or what am I communicating to? Am I communicate, communicating to the problem or to the person? Wow. Wow. So we separate the issue from the problem. Like, sit the problem over there on a the chair and we talk to that. Yeah. As a team, ah, right. we talk to that issue talk and say, how good. can we do that? As a team, good, you have good. to humble. Everybody had to humble. Everybody got to come yes. together. Well, thank you so much for coming together with us. We no appreciate problem. it. I enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to pick up your copy of Dear Future Wife everywhere fine books are sold.